Hey guys, James here and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, this channel is all about sharing my lifelong love of cars with you guys. For years now, I've been a huge fan of the Mazda Miata and I've owned two of them. The first one was a lightly track prepped 1994 NA Miata with a five speed manual. And the second one was a 2019 ND2 club trim level with the Brembo BBS package. Miatas are amazing roadsters, and I for one actually really like the body roll on the street. It really communicates to you what the car is doing. But on the track though, things are different because from one corner to the next corner to the next one, you're constantly pulling maximum Gs. And when I took my ND2 to the track in stock form with stock tires, I felt that the body roll was maybe 30 to 40% more than was actually necessary to really clearly communicate to me what's going on with the chassis. For 2022, Mazda has come out with a technology that they call KPC, kinematic posture control, which is supposed to reduce body roll in the corners. What's really awesome is that every new Miata gets KPC because it actually doesn't require any additional hardware. It's just actually software that more intelligently uses the existing hardware to create this reduced body roll effect. So what is KPC and how does it work? KPC is actually really simple in operation. In the midst of a high G corner, the Miata will now break the inside rear wheel just a little bit, and that will actually reduce body roll. If you look at the Miata from the side, you can see what's going on. If we apply the brakes to the inside rear wheel, so in this example, we're turning right, so the inside rear wheel is the rear right wheel, we actually create a torque that pulls down the body of the car. And because that torque is applied on the right side of the vehicle rather than on both or the left, then it tugs that side of the car back down, thereby reducing body roll. Now that's the main effect of KPC. And if we look at the car from the top down, we can see that there's one additional effect, which is kind of a byproduct. It's not really the point of KPC, but it's, it's kind of nice to have. And that is that applying the brakes on that inside rear wheel applies an additional torque on the vehicle, which actually turns the car into the corner a little bit more. Let's take a look at what happens if we break any of the other three wheels. If we break the inside front wheel, we can see that that actually torques the inside of the car even more upwards. And so that would actually increase body roll. What about the front outside wheel? So in the case of turning right, that would be the front left wheel. If we break that front left wheel, we would actually reduce body roll because the torque would actually pull up the left side of the car, the outside of the car in the curve, and that would counteract some of that body roll. But if we view from the top, the secondary torque would actually pull the car out of the curve. So that would make the Miata less agile in the corner. And what about the rear outside wheel? So again, in the case of turning right, that would be the rear left wheel. Well, that's the worst of both worlds because in that case, we would increase body roll by torquing that left side of the car down further and torque the car out of the curve because we are braking on that left side of the car as we're trying to turn right. And this is why KPC uses that inside rear wheel. When we analyze the two main torques that happen, they are both beneficial to the car, reducing the body roll and torquing that car into the curve. If you are accelerating through a high G curve, KPC will brake even harder than usual on that inside rear wheel uh, compared to say if you're just maintaining your speed through a high G corner. And it does this to limit the slip of that inside rear wheel to basically bolster the limited slip differential effect. Now note that KPC does not replace a limited slip diff. So if you want your Miata to be able to kind of slide out in a very predictable and fun way, you still want a proper limited slip diff. As of right now, the US configurator for the Miata shows that the Sport model and the Grand Touring model with the automatic transmission do not come with a limited slip diff, whereas the Club and the manual transmission Grand Touring do. If your Miata comes with an LSD, then KPC will just enhance that effect, and if it doesn't, then KPC will give you a bit of a quasi-LSD effect. Mazda also says that KPC helps the steering feel more linear and more natural, and I have yet to find a clear explanation as to why, but I do have an educated guess. Body roll will actually change the suspension geometry, so if KPC reduces body roll, then the steering should feel more consistent between lower G curves and higher G curves, because there's less of that change 
in the suspension geometry between those two types of corners. But again, that is just an educated guess. So if you guys know anything more about that, please leave that in the comments below. I'd love to hear what you have to say. So at this point, let's talk about the alternatives and possible downsides to KPC. So you might be wondering, why didn't Mazda just pop in thicker anti-roll bars, also called sway bars? Well, the main problem of just shoving a really stiff sway bar into the Miata is that it reduces ride quality, mainly by causing both sides of the suspension of the vehicle to no longer be as independent from one another. So if you go over a bump on one side, it affects the other side more if you have a stiffer sway bar. And this is true of any vehicle with overly stiff sway bars. So that's why you see that often you know, expensive of sports cars and SUVs often have adaptive sway bars so that they can selectively stiffen up in the middle of a curve and then loosen up again when you're just going straight and you need that ride quality. That sounds pretty good. How come the Miata doesn't have adaptive sway bars? Well, adaptive sway bars are expensive and they add weight and complexity because they actually have to have a motor in the middle to make those adjustments. Not only does KPC preserve the simplicity and the lightness of the Miata, it also preserves the inexpensiveness of the Miata because KPC costs Mazda nothing to add to each additional car. It's just software, right? So beyond that initial development cost, there is no further unit cost. What are the downsides of KPC then? The first possible downside that I can think of is increased and uneven brake wear in the rear. This problem should be trivial on the street because you're rarely ever gonna engage KPC. On the racetrack though is where I think KPC could lead to significantly more brake wear in the rear. When you're driving on the track, nearly every corner is a maximum G corner. So you can imagine just how often KPC is kicking in and potentially overheating those rear brakes. That said, if you are taking your Miata to the track, I mean, brake pads are considered a consumable item that you know you sort of expect to replace anyway. So this may increase the cost of consumables just by a little bit, but you know I, I'm gonna go ahead and guess that not a lot of people actually will mind. And the final potential issue with KPC is the fact that, well, it was designed with the stock suspension in mind. So it's a little unclear whether it'll play nicely with aftermarket suspension. Let's say if you put your Miata on coilovers. It's a little unclear how well KPC will work in that case. All in all, I love the way that Mazda continues to innovate in ways that make more out of less, which is really the essence of minimalism, and promote a more natural feeling driving experience. That's the Jinba Itai philosophy that they really follow. So what other car tech are you guys most interested in learning more about? Leave a comment below to let me know. Thank you guys for sticking around until the end. If you liked this video, if you could hit that like button, that would be amazing. It really helps out this little channel that I'm building here. And hit that subscribe button if you're not yet subscribed. Again, my name is James. Thank you so much for joining me today. I will see you in the next video. Take care.